113 hours 113 hours it took me to beat Atelier Riser 3 Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key So first off, I'm gonna talk about the world exploration the world exploration in this game is probably one of the best world exploration among the three Atelier Riser games that I've played so far. Granted that the uh, the exploration in Atelier Riser 1 and Atelier Riser 2 is practically the same where the exploration is from one area to another. While in Atelier Riser 3, they took a somewhat different approach where they're going for a open world exploration where you can explore different areas without the game needing to load every time you go from one area to another. Long story short, you can fast travel from one landmark to another, you can head over to a campfire to rest or to gain buffs in the case you haven't unlocked the, the landmark of that particular area you haven't explored yet. You can ride on beasts just like in Atelier Reza 2, but an additional of two more different beasts where each beast has different purpose and can be unlocked through sight. West. Heck, you can even ride on dolphins, which is something entirely new in uh, Atelier Riser 3. And of course, you can swim underwater just like in Atelier Riser 2 and crawl through tunnels if you want to have a nice view of Riser's assets, just like in Atelier Riser 2. So, I gotta say, the world exploration is hands down one of the best aspects of the game. Speaking of something entirely new, there's two new features that has been added into Atelier Riser 3 that I discovered which are the random quests and the secret key mechanism or system. I'm not really sure which one we're going to call it. So let's talk about the random quests first. Random quests, as the name implies, can only be triggered during exploration. And there's at least two kinds of random quests uh, where you either exchange materials or you are being requested for, to fight against certain enemies. Personally, I didn't really mind doing this quest as some of the rewards from these random quests are skill points to upgrade Riser's Alchemy skill tree, which I will come into later, and to increase the character's stats. As for secret keys, there are at least three ways to use this key, which are doing exploration, synthesis, and combat. You can equip these keys to characters to increase their stats, unlock certain areas using during exploration, use it during combat, and as a matter of fact, right, you can even use it during synthesis as well. Therefore, personally, I feel like this secret key mechanic is a nice new feature into the game, to me at least. Now, since I mentioned combat earlier on, right? So basically, in the combat in Atelier Reza 3 is basically about the same as in Atelier Reza 2, where it's a combination of um, turn based and real time. And if done correctly, the game won't feel turn based and feels more like an action RPG, where you start things off by performing your basic attack and then you do a follow up with the where you activate the character's skill and then if you once you're done activating performing the the, the skill combo there's a chance that you uh, you end up with a follow up and then once the follow up is done you can just switch to you can just immediately switch to another character and then you and that particular character does a basic basic attack again and then follow up with the skill and then there's a, another follow up there's that's practically a loop so it doesn't really like in that sense, right? It doesn't didn't really feel like a, like a turn-based um, RPG game, unlike in Final Fantasy, the old Final Fantasy games where they have an active uh, time battle system, from my understand, where you have to wait until the the waiting time bar is full, and then your characters can perform an action. However, the combat during the first half of the game, it was rough. I was legit struggling when fighting against even small enemies to the extent that got me thinking are there enemies scale based on the character levels just like how they do it in Elden Ring? <laughs> because here's the thing, in Atelier Riser 3, 
the only way to upgrade your weapons, armor and accessories is through synthesis. There's no other method. Unlike in Attila Ryza 2 where you can head over to a merchant or you can head over to a blacksmith to purchase new weapons, new armor or maybe new accessories, in Attila Ryza 3, no, no such thing. The only way to do so is you perform a synthesis to alchemy to be precise. And the only way to better get better weapons and materials required to upgrade these particular weapons in Attila Ryza 3 as a matter of fact is through the alchemist skill tree which to me is a big minus to be honest personally i don't like the idea of having weapon recipe and the respective material required to make a new weapon placed at the skill tree i would rather have the idea of uh, just like in Attila Resident, what they do is from the the, the first weapon you uh, you try to unlock as many of the, the traits as possible and then once you reach the recipe section from there you will unlock a new weapon personally i would rather prefer that kind of a method to unlock new weapons fortunately by the time i reached the second half of the game for some reason the the combat got much more better and easier and by the time i reached the last quarter of the game the combat feels so much more better where I can literally can see my characters dealing big damage to these to these enemies. Granted, the last quarter of the game, I've given my characters the best weapons and armors possible. I didn't really um, bother making a new uh, accessories because I feel like I'll I'll just make do with what I have. But I'll just make the uh, the, the character's best weapon possible and the best armor possible, and then go in and let's see how things goes and so far during the last quarter yes the combat feels way much better for me at least so the combat during the first half of the game is definitely one of my biggest gripes about the game and another thing i want to criticize on is the gathering tools now in atelier riser 1 and at the Riser 2, there is an icon where you can see what uh, whichever grading icon that you're using. So that it notifies you, for example, you want to gather materials using the, the axe, or you want to use gather materials using the hammer, or etc. etc. There will be an icon uh, at the bottom right of the screen where it notifies you which gathering tool you are currently using. Which to me is completely fine. At least it notifies you as a player that oh you're using the you're using the ha the the the, the axe right now. So if you want to gather materials using another gathering material, you just press with the press of one button and you just just to quick switch the the gathering tool and you're good to go. However, in Atelier Riser Three, they completely remove that uh, user interface. They completely remove the uh, the UI because at times. I want to gather materials using um, different gathering tools and when I want to enter combat, I most of the time I will be using the hammer because the hammer provides the enemy a debuff defense down stat onto them. So before combat, I wanted to use the hammer first but unfortunately there, were, there was no other way to know which gathering tool you are using other than you standing in front of the, the material you want to gather or you hold the gathering tool button and you just switch from there. Personally, I don't really like that idea to be very honest because my reaction will be slow in that sense and I'm, I'm uh, unable to debuff the enemy by inflicting a defense down onto, onto those enemies. Therefore, the developers removing, removing the eye of the gathering tools is another big minus in, in my personal honest opinion. As for the story in this game, which I try my best not to go into detail and spoil as much as possible. The story is somewhat unmemorable and it can be confusing at times where basically the group have to figure out how to move or destroy an island in order to save their own island. That's pretty much um, what I can tell you about what is the story of Atelier Reza 3 is all about. However, what I really enjoy in this game the character interaction between Visa and her friends. It's as though you are really, really going on a journey with these people. 
and you can clearly see the character de development in these characters, especially in Ryza. For example, Ryza has quite a rough relationship with her mother in Aquila Ryza 1, where she really sees alchemy is a bad thing. So Ryza, in Aquila Ryza 1, what, what Ryza did is Ryza has to try her utmost best to prove that alchemy can be used for the greater good. But in Ryza 3, you can see that the bond between um, Ryza and her parents, especially her mom, has grown closer and closer as the game progresses. But granted, you can fully feel the character's growth of these characters if you have played the first two Ryza games. And there's another thing that I really, really want to highlight about this game, which is the music. Musics from JRPGs such as Final Fantasy, Persona, Star Ocean 2 and Xenoblade, from my understand, have memorable music where the moment the music is being played, your mind will be instantly think of that one memorable moment whenever you hear that particular music. And it just so happened that Atelier Ryza 2 has quite a number of banger music like this one. However, the music in Atelier Ryza 3, it fits the mood and it fits the atmosphere, but unfortunately, it's not memorable. It's as though the musicians went all out on Atelier Ryza 2 and they ran out of juice, they decided to go, to go back to play it safe and not go full ham, just like what they did in Atelier Ryza 1, which I find it a little disappointing to be very honest. Overall. Atelier Ryza 3 is a niche game where you have to play the first two games to not only fully understand the story but also the game mechanics as well. And not to mention that the Atelier Ryza 3 really doesn't really have any memorable, impactful moments as a matter of fact, which is one of the reasons why I call not only the Atelier Ryza trilogy but the Atelier series in general niche. I have to break it to you, but this is how I see it. But still, I personally enjoyed the journey that this game has provided me. As a matter of fact, right, I went in 1000% as blind as possible. Even though there are a few vibes that I mentioned on where the combat during the first half was, was a complete nightmare to be very honest. But still, I personally enjoy the, the character interaction between Ryza and her friends. And I definitely enjoyed the world exploration that this game has provided me without shadow of doubt. Therefore, I will give this game on a score on a critical score basis a 7 out of 10. And on a personal score level, an 8 out of 10. I'm just glad that I discovered this game last year when an anime adaptation was announced. And I'm kind of glad that I decided to check out the game itself instead of watching the anime first and then check out the game just out of curiosity because here's the thing on a side note here's the thing about anime adaptation based on games they tend to suck I'll be real they tend to suck so I'm really kind of glad that I decided to check out the the game first instead of watching the anime f instead and I will say this, this may not be the best RPG of all time, but it's definitely one of my favorite ones. And I will definitely remember the name Vajalin Stout aka Vaisal.